There was not one person in my class that had consistently beaten the grades that I was getting. It had nothing to do with talent. It had nothing to do with luck. It wasn't because I was naturally more intelligent than anyone else, because I certainly wasn't. It had everything to do with effort. That was all it was. My bachelor's degree took three years. If you want numbers, 52 exams later, 27 assignments later, 8 PowerPoint presentations later, 3 straight years. And I put 100% effort into all of them. Every single thing that I handed in to be marked by my lecturer, I gave it everything I had. And that's the only thing that kept me at the top, because that's all I was interested in. I had no business coming in second or coming in third. There was no other person in that class willing to give up what I was willing to give up. There was no other person in that class willing to sacrifice what I sacrificed. I'm just sharing my story to tell you all that it can be done. You need to destroy the self-imposed limitations. I hear it every day from people just like you. They tell me, I'm just not smart enough to get the highest grades and I'm just not wired that way. But it's that exact mindset that is the only thing stopping you. It's the only thing stopping you from achieving phenomenal grades. And I would know, I've been there. I used to place self-limiting restrictions on myself. All throughout high school, I didn't think that I was clever enough. I didn't think that I was able to perform among the top students in my class. And it was a self-fulfilling prophecy because I didn't believe I could become a high performing student. So I didn't study like one which resulted in average grades. My whole educational career throughout my whole time at school, I was only getting average grades because I didn't believe that I could get phenomenal grades. It wasn't until university that I was able to remove those self-limiting restrictions. I started to actually believe that I could achieve incredible things. So I started putting more effort into my studying, significantly more effort. Instead of coming home and turning on the TV, I'd come home and go straight to my desk to study. Instead of watching pointless YouTube videos and series on Netflix, I'd watch documentaries and educational programs. It was the effort that I knew would take me to the top. It was the effort that I knew would get me the best job after graduation. It was the effort that I knew would take care of my family financially. It was the effort that was between me and success. And I knew that. I knew that no one could give me that effort. It was a waste of time trying to find it externally. Extraordinary effort can only come internally. My family couldn't give me it. My lecturers or friends couldn't give me it. It was all down to me. As Les Brown puts it, you have to say yes to your life, yes to your dreams, yes to you, yes to your studying. It doesn't matter how many times you've failed. It doesn't matter how many mistakes you've endured. It doesn't matter about your defeats. It doesn't matter about what you've done. You know you can do more than what you've been doing. You know that there's some exceptional work ethic within you that you haven't brought out of you yet. See, if you look at your life and if you're not getting what you want, you owe it to yourself to do something differently. If you're not getting the grades you want, if you're not performing where you think you're capable of, if that's what it is, then you owe it to yourself to start strategically working to change your direction. And you know what most people will do? Most people will fight change, as if change is worse than what you're experiencing. Most people will not challenge the unknown, they just won't step out there. But life isn't like that, it's not how you grow. So as you look at your life you think, I'm not getting what I want. Begin to know that whatever it takes for you to create that, You've got that within you, you've got that, you've got that genius in you, you've got that intelligence in you, you've got that creativeness in you, you've got that self-discipline in you. If you decide to take the initiative to change the current quality of your life, then you will find that the universe is on your side. Now, will it be turbulent? Yep. Will it be easy? Absolutely not. Will it take a lot of mistakes? Yep. But you owe it to you. You owe you. There are two sides of pain that I don't think a lot of people really understand. There's one side of pain that's the suffering and discomfort side of pain. That's the side of pain where you force yourself to wake up in the morning, where your whole body is telling you to have a lie in. We all know that feeling, every single one of us. It's the side of pain where you have to force yourself to study when your friends are calling you to hang out. It's the side of pain when you get your exam results back but you're disappointed because you felt like you deserved better. But then there's another side of pain and that's called effort. It's called success. 
It's called If You Can Find A Way To Push Through The Pain, There's Something Great On The Other Side Of It. And if you've never tapped into it, it's because the first time you felt it, you back off. The first time you felt it, your natural reaction is to back away, it's just too much. We rationalise with ourselves to where we automatically stop as soon as we begin to feel the pain. It's why so many of us give up in life so quickly. It's why a lot of students have a problem finishing things. Because as soon as they feel a small bit of discomfort or things they don't immediately like, they're gone. I can't do it anymore, they say. But suppose I told you the craziest pain of my life is the reason why I'm sitting here today. So I dare you to take a little pain. You're not going to die just because you had to study. It's not dangerous. It's nothing compared to what our ancestors had to go through. It's nothing compared to what people are experiencing in war zones. So go through it, embrace it. It's the only way you're going to reach success. The guys that have already reached success, Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, Oprah Winfrey, every successful person you can think of, they've all experienced phenomenal amounts of pain to get where they are today because the pain is temporary it might last a few minutes all day or even the rest of the year but eventually you'll come out the other side stronger than you were before but if you quit that pain's going to last forever and you can make that decision today right now as soon as this video ends go and get your textbooks and spend an extra hour studying just one hour studying tonight spend a bit less time watching tv tonight spend a bit longer preparing for tomorrow's studying it's these small actions that if taken on a daily basis accumulate into big results the small wins throughout the day consistently and then these actions turn into bigger actions. Maybe you start studying an extra two hours a day or an extra three or four hours a day and you've just got to start and that's the hardest part but once productive habits start to form you'll see the results for yourself. Like I said I wouldn't be here right now where I am today if I didn't have the obstacles and adversity and all the setbacks that came at me throughout my life and let's face it we all have setbacks and failures and things that just don't go the way we want them. And they bring us down and maybe they make us depressed and maybe we feel like we can't go on anymore. But using these obstacles and adversity as motivation to study is one of the most powerful things you can do because that's exactly what I did. And when I graduated from university, I was twice the person I was before I started. And it's funny because I spent £40,000 in three years of my life to graduate with an economics and finance degree, but I'm going to be honest with you, I have absolutely no intention of using that degree, none whatsoever. But I didn't do it for the degree, I didn't do it for the piece of paper. In fact, I made a video on why I spent £40,000 on a degree that I'll never use. You can click on the video on the screen and I'll explain why I have absolutely no regrets. It was probably one of the best decisions of my life and I'd do it again in a heartbeat if I had the chance. So I'll see you over there.